and I support this bill. Thank you. Just before I call the next speaker, I wish to advise the House that New Zealand First will split its call between the Right Honourable Winston Peters and the Honourable Member Brendan Horan. Uh, standing order 118, brackets 2. <laughs> I call the Right Honourable Winston Peters. He was Peters. an organiser for the Clerical Workers' Union. He marched against the Employment Contracts Act. He voted against the Employment Contracts Act because of a strong pro-union conviction, yet today he walked in here and quoted Luther and spoke like Lucifer. This is a man... This is a man in a most sad circumstance because this is not a government bill. This is a private member's bill. This bespeaks someone who's being used. This bespeaks someone who has been uh, purchased off. This is a man who's happy to sell his soul, to happy to sell his soul for a few pieces of silver or promotion. He was against all these things. And this is a private member's bill. Strike action must be preceded by a secret ballot. And he said one thing we hold dear is freedom to choose. That's what Tauhenare said. Well, did the ports of Auckland's real owners have the freedom to choose recently on the lockout? No. no. Where's the fairness between both sides on this legislation? Where's the balance? There's no balance at all. You have someone who's prepared to come along and put his name to a private member's bill. You know, I can remember way back the song Part of the Union, which went like this. Now I'm amazed, now I'm a union man, amazed, amazed at what I am. I say what I think, that the company stinks. And with a hell of a shout, it's out, brothers out. But with Mr. Henare, it's with a hell of a shout, I sell out. That's what's happening here. I sell out. You know, it is not, as Mr. Seal said, too late to withdraw this bill. But when I saw Mr. Hanara today, it reminded me of that classic and most, most sad historic and biblical event when St. Peter's asked, does he know Jesus? And the Bible says, and the cock crowed three times, and he knew him not. And all the workers and all the unionists that Toe used to work for, Hanari that is, in the old days when he had a character and integrity, when they came and said to him, are you going to act for us? He knew them not. You know, Mr. Henry, one of these days, one of your grandchildren, one of your grandchildren are going to ask you, Granddad, when they came for the ordinary people, when they came for the worker, when they came for us, what did you, as, what as a, as a member of parliament, did you do? That's what they'll ask. And he won't have to, if he withdraws this bill, he won't have to splutter and cough and make out he can't hear the grandchild. Oh, no, sir. He'll be able to look that child in the eye and say, when they came for people like you and me, I stood up for the ordinary people. I stood up for ordinary New Zealanders, the people that in my background I know I should respond to. He won't have to look nervous and walk out of the room because the grandchild's asking such a serious question. He'll be able to say he looked them in the eye and that he did something to stop these elitists ripping people off. He could withdraw this bill, but he won't. He won't. But it's not too late even now. It's not too late even now for him to actually do what is his, is his duty. And it's not hiding behind the skirts of women. It's not praising the white man, the white man that came from Merrill Lynch. It is not cuddling up to all those white boys next to him now. No, no, it's the time for duty. And the clarion call of all those who ever came to New Zealand first is honour thy people. That's why we'll oppose this legislation. Speaker, <laughs> I order, order, order. Um, I call. Sir, this order. is a bill of I call.